What's up guys, No Nonsense Know How, and today I wanted to give a brief overview on how to replace the water pump in this 1997 Ford Aerostar with a 3.0. Should go for probably Ford Rangers and a few others. I'm gonna keep this real fast paced since I saw there's already a few other good videos on this, so I figure I'll just give you the uh, what you need to know. First thing's gonna be coming down on your driver's side and loosening this petcock, it looks like that. I've removed the whole thing, and I like to use a socket with cut notches in it, but it goes right in the bottom corner of your radiator, right where that hole, that threaded hole is. So you pop that out and then come up top and remove your radiator cap to assist and break the vacuum so that can all drain out. Now remove your intake duct, eight millimeter hose clamp, this intake air temperature sensor, a hose, another eight millimeter on that. And you can, obviously I already had that off before. Uh, and then you could leave uh, your air box in if you want, or disconnect your mass airflow meter and wiggle this air box out. Mine was just kind of sitting in there loose. Now use some channel locks, remove this spring clamp on your upper radiator hose and tuck that up. You now need to get your fan clutch off. It's probably the toughest part of this job. And you see this big nut on here that's 36 millimeter and it's reverse thread, so you have to turn it clockwise to remove it. A great tool for doing that is a air hammer with this Lyle pneumatic fan clutch tool on there. You just put this on like in that position and hit the button once and it usually pops it right off. You could also use a large 36 millimeter wrench or a fan clutch wrench and hit that with a hammer, but this kit does come in handy for fan clutches. Once you crack that loose, you can spin the fan and uh, spin the whole thing off of there. Then remove two 8mm head bolts from the top of the radiator, here and here. And your whole fan shroud and fan are going to come out in one assembly, like so. Just got to wiggle that baby out of it. Plenty of access now, and before removing this belt, crack each of these 10mm bolts on the water pump pulley loose. So that way it's not spinning and you don't have to worry about holding it so much. Make sure to draw yourself a diagram or come up under the hood and see if you have a belt diagram there already. Here's a good shot of that if you want to pause it, in case you don't have one. And then you can see it shows you to put the wrench on right there and turn it counter, I'm sorry, clockwise. So we'll turn that clockwise, that relieves our tension, and you can slide the belt off. I had to spray the pulley with rust penetrant and tap it with a hammer a bunch to get it to break the bond between the pump and the pulley. But with that off, you can now remove this bracket, and that's going to be 18 millimeter on this idler pulley, and then three 13 millimeters. One, two, and three. Third one's right there. Uh, so we can get that bracket out of the way and have better access to the water pump bolts. Now take your couple small hoses off by removing those clamps and sliding them off. I found on this one, it's easy to get a pry bar, long, long pry bar, and just kind of pry up. Just make sure on this radiator you don't damage anything, and uh, and it's not a bad idea to cover this with cardboard too when you're working on this. But you also have a crank sensor down here, so remove that, and boom, plenty of access except for the right side of the pump. So we do have to remove this uh, whole power steering bracket. Well, that was easy as pie. Just three 13 millimeters, and that just comes right out of the way. You see those three 13 millimeter bolts in there? Good job, Ford. That was very easy. Tie that off with a bungee cord, tucking it out of the way, and then remove all your 13 millimeter bolts on the water pump, along with some eight millimeter bolts also. Make sure to position your drain pan down beneath in case there's coolant left in there. And also take note that this one's got that mini stud. You got a stud on this one. It's best to keep these all organized and put them back in the same place they came out since sometimes they vary in length. That was five eight millimeter heads and then rest all the 13s. I kind of left them in place, pulled them out and I should be able to slide this straight out. Hits that nipple on the top a little bit. Right, boom. And let's see what this baby looks like. Oh yeah, there you go. So diagnosis was correct. That's why this thing was over overheating. Wasn't getting any water pump flow. And you never truly know until you take it off, but see those fins just shredded right off from all the uh, acidity. Now this is what can happen when you don't change your coolant at all. You get major acidic coolant and that just rots everything away. So if you have a pump like this, you really wanna do a few flushes on the system and get all that 
that acidic coolant out of there. That stuff will just chew everything up. It even looks like it started etching the metal on the block, unless maybe the fins. Uh, it's probably from the fins coming off, actually. Got all chewed up in there a little bit. And then the worst part of this job is getting the old gasket off. Sometimes they come off easy, and sometimes you got to sit there scraping it forever. Just make sure you don't gouge this up too much. This is an aluminum housing, or is it cast iron? Yep, aluminum. So make sure you don't chew that up too much when you're scraping that gasket off. I used this gasket scraper and a razor blade to get the majority of it off. This could take you 10 or 15 minutes easily. Now, you don't want to scratch it like I said, but most importantly you want to make sure you get all those humps off there because it's better to have a gouge than leave a hump of the old gasket. Once you get it to that point, uh, I like to use one of these 3M bristle discs, it's a roll lock disc on the uh, die grinder, and I'll clean it up the rest of the way. And now I'm at the point where I have an acceptable surface to work with. I've cleaned this off with acetone. Everything's ready to go here. We're ready to put the new pump and gasket on and I'll just give you a couple notes here. Most important step is you see how these have this thread sealant on them? You want to take each of these bolts and go wire wheel them off, clean them off, and then use new thread sealant which looks like this. You could use this Permatex thread sealant with Teflon. You could use Teflon tape or what I really recommend is just uh, covering them with the right stuff because basically those holes in the block they lead into the coolant passages and if you don't do this you might end up with coolant trickling past the bolt head it shouldn't really go past the gasket but I mean inside of these blocks if you blow into these these aren't blind holes they most of them actually go into the block so I just put it on every bolt just to be safe and so you'll transfer those all into the appropriate slot even though they're all the same length you have those couple with the studs and now on your gasket, some guys like to put these in just dry, which is fine, but I like to take an extra preventative measure and I use Permatex the right stuff. I rub just the tiniest film layer on the entire gasket on both sides. Not like a bunch, just a smear around the entire thing. Put that on, bolt it on. You will never have a leak again, I promise you. I've been doing it that way forever. You could skip this if you want, but the nice thing is if you did put any gouges in here or if it's not a perfectly smooth surface since you were cleaning it, uh, you're not gonna get any leaks. I've got all the bolts hand threaded in there, including the eight millimeter ones, RTV or thread sealant on the appropriate bolts or put them on all of them if you want, but it only needs to go on the ones that pass through into the block. And we're ready to torque this down. Of course, I opted to do the RTV on the gasket too. Now there is a torque spec on this and there's a sequence, but I don't have that handy right now since our computer is actually acting up and I saw mixed opinions online. So I always just use the German method of guten tight on these, never had an issue. But if you're not familiar with torquing fasteners, definitely look up that spec. And if you find it, plug it in down below in the comments. Hugely appreciate that and I'll add it to the description for other people in the future. With those torqued, we're ready to put everything back together, reverse of how we took it apart. So starting with this bracket. Uh, you might notice I also cleaned this off with some emery cloth. Make sure you don't have any rust and pitting on that, not too bad. And if you see coolant in your wire connectors, like on this crank position sensor, make sure to blow that out. Not a bad idea to put a touch of dielectric grease on that connector and spray this down with acetone too so you don't end up with a squealing belt. I'm going to be putting a new belt on this too, but wherever you got coolant, make sure to clean that off and then I'll try and give you some other tips after I get this going together. Ready to drop the fan and shroud in, and before doing so, make sure you double check that all your clamps and bolts, everything's tight, uh, belt routing is proper, and when you're putting this pulley back on, of course it wants to freewheel on you, so you can grab the inside of it with some large uh, slip joint or channel lock pliers to torque those down. And when you're dropping this fan in, make sure they go in together like they came out, and that these bottom tabs slide into the grooves down below. You should have steel clips on the bottom of the radiator that look like that. The fan clutch threads can be stubborn and get started, but once you have that zip down, put your uh, fan clutch wrench or this tool back on and just give it a few hits with the hammer or simply like this. And that's gonna be tight enough for that. Upper rad hose on, intake duct, clamps tight, wires all connected. Don't forget to put your pet cock in and tighten that. And then you can fill her up. I really like using these Lyle funnel kits. It makes it easy to pour the coolant in and then burp all the air out. You can let that sit, gurgle away. I do recommend topping the system off completely before starting it. That way you don't dry start the water pump. These kits are great. They come with adapters for all the different radiators. Once the level's settled out, you can start her up. Then put the vent on heat, blower on high, 
and raise the RPM until you get good heat coming out of this and all the bubbles stop coming out of that funnel. I've ran that for 15 minutes. It's blowing hot. You can now take this stick, drop it right into here to block the bottom of that and then pop this off. A little bit of coolant might spill out, but nothing came out that time. And then put your radiator cap on. You can see the coolant still has orange color, even though it's two and a half gallons of fresh coolant. Uh, the customer didn't want any additional flushing or labor for that. So uh, we're going to leave it just as it is. Don't think he's going to have a problem with that new pump. This thing's got 195,000 miles on it, so I doubt it'll live to see another 195. I think something else will probably fail before that water pump does. Don't forget to top your reservoir bottle off too. Make sure to bring that up to the high mark and you are done. Go drive it, make sure it don't overheat. That's how you replace the water pump in this 1997 Ford Aerostar with a 3.0. I hope the video was somewhat helpful, even though I didn't uh, show you all the camera work the entire time, taking every nut and bolt. Here's a look at all the tools I used in this video. Well, mostly everything. Here's all the adapters that come with that Lyle kit. Forget if I said it earlier, but I'll make sure to plug links to all this stuff, the pump, try and plug links to everything down below on Amazon. Do you need all these tools? No, but this all made the job very easy. Uh, like I said, I definitely recommend the pneumatic fan clutch kit. The Permatex the right stuff. This is the best RTV you're ever going to use. German engineered. This is like a Mercedes engineered product that Permatex brought, uh, bought the rights to. This M12 Milwaukee ratchet. I've been using this for a few years now and I love these so much. Worth its weight in gold. And yeah, a couple of razor blades, some sealant, you got the rest. You know, speaking of other things that should be done on this job, it wouldn't be a bad idea to replace your thermostat. Uh, if your fan clutch is bad, this one actually has a newer fan clutch in it, but if you spin this and the fan spins uh, real freely or it's locked up, replace that fan clutch. And of course, your serpentine belt and anything else that looks like it needs attention. Like if your radiator hoses, these are original, but they seem in good shape. If they're uh, bulging or soft or dry rotted, make sure to replace them. Like usual, make sure to drop this a thumbs up, comment, any questions, definitely leave them down below. Check out those links in the description. If you get the time, consider checking out another video on one of my uh, another video on my channel or subscribing. And until uh, next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how. And I do hope I see you again. See you next time. Hey nah. Walking at the oaks, the throat, snow bus, see the bottle and answer you, person, you and your fish, diary, home folks, met, sit, twist, the other thought, the dark customer, that the dark brain, the nasty, the sermon, the kelsey, the brain, the nanomer, so you never buy you, the throat, the sermon, the bus, the other customer, but they stop me, get I mean, he's name, carmel, fight, the skip, my, he's the irrevised, the bimbo, sit the one, so see the body, and